All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to talk about the overall view of why this is even important, right? So we know in our cells we need oxygen to survive. Uh, we turn oxygen into ATP through the Krebs cycle. And so oxygen comes into the cells, and CO2 leaves them. And then this whole hemoglobin with the oxygen and the carbonic acid, that's all how we regulate and uh, get rid of CO2 and bring in oxygen, right? So that's the overall view, right? So I'm just going to, it's going to be a quick video. We're going to say, this is the air outside. We breathe in because our alveolar pressure is lower than our uh, atmospheric pressure, right? So it's going to cause air to come in. We'll make a whole video about that whole thing. Uh, so the air comes into the alveolar or the alveolus, and then it diffuses across this capillary wall in the lungs, in the alveoli, right? Remember, they're really perfused with capillaries, very surrounded from the lung lectures that we were talking about. So now this O2, note, less than 2% is actually dissolved in the plasma. The other 98 plus percent diffuses into this erythrocyte here. And then it reacts with the hemoglobin to make oxyhemoglobin or oxohemoglobin, either one. That oxohemoglobin now can leave the lungs, come in through the pulmonary vein, and then get ejected out of the heart into the systemic circulation, which is what this is. So now this red blood cell has traveled all the way to Whatever cells, whatever tissue, say this is the liver, doesn't matter. We'll just say this is the liver. And this will be the hepatic artery. Or I think that is the hepatic artery. I just guessed. Anyway, so we're in the liver now. So the difference between these two things is the environment outside of the hemoglobin, right? So if we look on the left here, what is this? This is a high concentration of oxygen, not a high concentration of CO2. Not a lot of H plus ions we're seeing here. Not a lot of that going on. It's mostly oxygen. So the PO2 is going to be pretty high here, right? But on this side, we have a little interesting thing going on compared to here on the, on the left. This side here, we have cells. And inside of those cells, we have these little mitochondrion. These little guys are bringing in O2, spitting out CO2. So as we approach this tissue as an erythrocyte, our environment on the outside starts to change. And that change in environment is going to increase or decrease hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. And that's what all of this is about. So we know that at the cell, this cell is living. It's respiring, right? This is a little extra, guys, and don't have to go crazy with this, but I'm just giving you an overall view. So this cell is taking in oxygen and then spitting out CO2, right? How does that CO2 affect the hemoglobin? Does it increase the affinity or does it decrease the affinity? It decreases the affinity. I sure hope so, because if you decrease the affinity... That means that this reaction right here is going to be faster and happen more often, right? Because now it doesn't want this O2, the heme. It's ready to dump it off because of the acidic environment of the CO2, right? So that's the general theme, right? So this mitochondrion is going to spit out CO2 out of this cell. Then we have this whole kit and caboodle going on. We got CO2, which then turns into... H2CO3 by carbonic, for carbonic acid, anhydrase. Can I spell? No. I'm going to be a good doctor. Can't write either. Now, why is this important? This H2CO3 will then undergo an acid-base reaction and make HCO3- minus and H+. Plus simple acid dissociation right enzyme catalyzed reaction here acid base reaction here now that's telling us that around these cells which are living doing their own thing there's a bunch of h plus ions out here 
these H plus ions are a sign of life. It's like our trash, right? We have trash on the curb when during trash day. This H plus ions are on the outside when uh, the erythrocyte comes around. And so these H plus ions alter this hemoglobin structure. And that alteration changes the affinity for hemoglobin to oxygen. It makes hemoglobin release the oxygen. So now the O2 will readily leave the hemoglobin, right? We'll draw a different color for O2. So now this O2 is going to jump on out and it's going to go into the cell, right? So that's how the acidity affects the hemoglobin, right? All these different things going on here. That's why we want to work on this portion of the curve. We can alter hemoglobin's concentration, uh, uh, saturation of oxygen relatively easily with these different effects.